Hi guys, it's Shell, Heart of It All Custom Creations. Welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Hit that subscribe button to see future videos. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. So today I have a really adorable, fun mug for you. So let's get started. I'm starting out with this 10 ounce coffee mug from the Stainless Depot and um, I'm going to take it out of the box and get it ready to uh, prep. So I'm just putting everything back in the box so that I don't lose it. And then I'm going to take my sanding block and sand this thing down. You want to get off that protective layer. Um, getting underneath the handle is very tricky. So what I end up doing to get underneath the handle is just taking this emery board um, and it works amazing. So once I get all of that sanded, I wipe it down with 91% alcohol and I'm going to then paint it. I'm making a um, donut tumbler or mug. So I'm gonna use Cashew by Waverly Chalk Paint and um, I thought this was the perfect color to be kind of like um, the donut color. So I'm gonna give this two coats of paint and then um, let that dry. And once that's dry, I'm gonna put just a little bit of epoxy on there and um, put it all over the tumbler, a very thin coat so that we can glitter. And so I'm paying special attention to the handle. You don't want it to glob up around there. And um, once I get all of that smoothed on, then we'll move into glittering. Once that is all done, I'm taking ice from the glitter guy and I'm just sprinkling this all over the tumbler. Ice is a hack glitter, so whatever color is underneath is what it will show. So this kind of works perfectly because I don't have any beige-ish glitter, so this worked perfectly. Once that's done, I do set it aside to dry, and then it's time to epoxy the first coat. So I'm paying really special attention to the handle. I'm gonna do that first. I always do my handle first, and um, making sure to pay special attention to right where the um, handle meets the actual mug, and then I'll move on to the rest of the tumbler. I did mix up probably about, well, this is remaining because I had other tumblers to do. So I probably used probably about 10 milliliters of epoxy on this.
After that epoxy's dry, I do go in with one more coat before moving on to the next step. So I have a variety of colors of vinyl here on my mat and um, I am making a kind of like a donut shop logo with a donut on it. So I needed a lot of colors for the sprinkles and um, so I just picked these random colors and um, their sprinkles are going to be kind of sporadic. Now the blue one I had to recut because I didn't put it right on my mat. <laughs> so I'm missing some sprinkles, but that's okay. So this is just kind of the background. This is the icing. And then, um, of course, the tan is the actual donut itself. And here I'm just taking out all those little sprinkle spots where the other sprinkles will go in. And then um, I'll remove the rest of the vinyl for the logo. Because the top portion of the black has some very intricate writing, so I decided to reverse weed it. So that's what I'm doing here. And then once I'm done with that, I will layer the outline and the wording on top of the pink um, background. To ensure that I get the perfect alignment, I did put it back on its backing because it has a clear backing and just lining it up perfectly, as perfect as I can get it. Pull it back, pull the transfer tape back a little bit and cut off a little bit of that backing. And then once that's done, I just take my squeegee and squeegee it down. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and place it onto the tumbler so that I could go on to the next steps. And obviously I forgot to weed out all the little bits from the words, so that's what I'm doing here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start constructing the donut. So I take the icing and um, place it on that clear backing from the other thing. And then I realized that that inner part of the donut should have went last and I'm gonna have to recut that. So I'm lining up the icing exactly where it needs to and using that transfer tape as an anchor and then smooth that out, remove the transfer tape. Here's where I messed up. So I put it on the backing, but I put it on the wrong side of the backing and the vinyl stuck to it. So I did have to recut that out and then make sure that I have the correct side of the backing so that my vinyl doesn't stick to it. And then line that up and place that down as well. Cut off a little bit of the backing, anchor it down, and then remove the rest. But that didn't go as planned either. <laughs> so I just um, lined it up the best that I could and stuck it down. And then the um, center portion of the donut wasn't lining up right, so I'm gonna have to do that separately which no big deal. And then that's laid down. And then I take 
my sprinkles and I'm going to start lining those up one color at a time. And this is what we have so far. And I think it's so stinking cute. So I am going to seal this with the um, CC DIY quick coat and give it a one coat of epoxy. I just want to be able to protect that um, before we moved on. So after that's cured, I'm going to go ahead and mix up some KS resin liquidy split um, to do a drip. Once that's all mixed in, I want my icing to be pink. So I grabbed this acrylic paint and mixed it up and quickly realized that it is either, well, it's too kind of translucent-ish and it's too vibrant. So I grabbed a little bit of pearl mica powder to add in there to hopefully lighten it up a bit. And it worked okay, but, um, it still wasn't what I was looking for. Um, it did give it a really pretty pearl pearl-esque <laughs> look to it. But then I went ahead and decided to add just a smidge. I'm talking the tiniest bit of the Illumilite white dye. With this being fast set epoxy, it's not going to take it long to set up. So... I just keep checking to see if it's the consistency that I'm looking for. And I wanted this a fairly thick um, because I didn't want a big long drips because I wanted it to be donut icing. So once I get it to the consistency that I want, I'm gonna go ahead and place it towards the top of the rim all the way around. Now I'm doing a little bit thicker in the back than I do in the front because I do not want my logo to get covered. I do tap it to help it drip a little bit and then I realized it had set up a lot quicker than I really wanted it to. So I just take a heat gun to it and help that along. And all the strings that you see is because I use paint. Paint and epoxy tends to make it very stringy, but um, I made this work. So I just continue to go ahead and um, add my drips Again, adding some heat just to help soften that up a little bit and let it go down to um, where I want it. And then once I'm done with that, um, I had to move really quick because I'm going to add sprinkles. And I got this pack off of Amazon. Everything that I use will be listed in the description box below. But I'm just going to go ahead and start placing the sprinkles on. Um... It didn't need to be completely full because I still wanted some of the icing showing through. But um, this epoxy was setting up so quick that I had to push these sprinkles in. And then at one point, I do just roll it into the sprinkles. And um, I was able to push those in so that they wouldn't come out.
once I get done with all of the sprinkles, I will give this two final coats of epoxy before it is done. And here it is. I absolutely love this. I think it is so stinking cute. And you can still fill the sprinkles, which is exactly what I wanted. And um, here it is with the lid on it. And I absolutely, like I said, I just love this. But this will be available on the website for purchase if you are interested. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a great big thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.